Hey, yo. You are listening to Smart Asses with stand-up comedian Jordan Francisco and human wrestling almanac Hollywood Joe Williamson. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Yours truly, Jordan Montez, a.k.a. the Taco Father, a.k.a. everybody's worst nightmare, I think. And next to me, the one, the only, sports fanatic, Joey Williamson, a.k.a. Hollywood Joe. Yeah, buddy. We are doing a reunion podcast right now. When did uh, we used to do this, actually? This little fun little pro wrestling slash life. Started in late 2013, and the last podcast we did was March of 2014. Jesus Christ. That's crazy to think about, because life was so different. I think I weighed uh, 500 pounds almost back then, <laughs> and I was just coming out of open heart surgery. Yes, it was it was a crazy time, but we had we had fun things to talk about back then, and mm. I mean we always had each other, which is good. You're my you're my brother. Bro. Yeah, that was, buddy. That was quite some time ago, dude. Yeah, I know. That's both, changed. Hell yes, it has. It's been a crazy ride for me personally. I don't know about you. Yeah, some crazy things here and there. Yeah, I don't weigh 500 pounds anymore. I actually lost I I actually lost about 150 160 pounds. Yeah, and I'm not the king of gun leg BP anymore either. <laughs> <laughs> king of gun leg BP. What? They got the best goddamn McDonald's cheeseburgers there. Oh, jeez, yeah. I don't think so. Well, man, yeah, dude, it's great to have you back. We're sharing one microphone here in my uh, beautiful apartment here in Otsego, Michigan. You drove all the way down here from Grand Rapids. Got to say I appreciate that, dude. Heck yeah, man. What are you doing out there in Grand Rapids? Uh, just, just living, dude. Yeah? Um... You know, just uh, running my sports blog as always, and uh, pretty pretty involved in my church. Um, been uh, helping them out with some ideas, and you know, just trying to stay positive, help people out. Yeah. Try to uplift people when I can. And Definitely during this stuff, that's uh, really important. Yeah. I think we're yeah. all losing our mind out here with this mm. COVID nineteen pandemic bullshit. Yeah. I mean, it's good to be safe, not sorry. I exactly. completely understand that. I'm all for that. But I think people are starting to lose their minds, and, and they're also losing their jobs and their incomes, and uh, that's not good. No. That's really not good. No. Um, I've been up to, wow, where do oh. I even start? Do you have four and a half hours? <laughs> in the no, we got about an hour. Holy shit. Yeah, wow. So in the short amount of time I've been gone, I traveled to Arizona, um, did some uh, dabbling in the uh, marijuana business. Um, back in 2016, 17, I moved back to Michigan. Yeah. Um, and that's where all hell broke loose, <laughs> honestly. Um, from there on out. Actually, the podcast we used to do at my parents' house before I left Arizona, that burned down to the ground. You remember that? Yep, I remember that. It was devastating. Yeah, it, that was kind of a crazy day. But, um, then after that, um, moved to Arizona, stayed out there for about a year and came back, um unsure of what I really wanted to do anymore. Yeah. I lost a shit ton of weight after my uh, surgery that I had and yeah. uh, did CrossFit with a dear friend of mine named Reagan Dooley. Shouts out to him. He's a great guy. Um, he owns a gym out there called, I think, Octane Fitness. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's a really good deal, so check him out if you get a chance. Remember, I came and saw you after your surgery. Yeah. I think yeah. I made you get, get up and go for a walk with me. Yeah, probably. And I, uh, that's when, you know... That was a really good decision I had to make. Um, my life was kind of flash in front of me there. And, uh, you know, a lot of bad choices. A lot of late yeah. nights in Taco Bell, dude. That's all I, that's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, uh, you know, I've made some healthy decisions my, myself. Um, December 31st of last year um, was the last time I drank pop slash <laughs> caffeine. Um, it's really actually been very healthy and beneficial for me. I can actually sleep normal and not be up at all hours of the night. And just, my body just feels better, you know, cutting out certain things. Well, I tell you what, I'm glad you're doing well. Um, (laughs) (laughs) No, it's been a series of uh, health scares and things like that for me. But uh, outside of all that, um, during that time, I had a beautiful baby girl brought into my life. Her name's Estella Christine Montez. She is the... uh, Joy to my world. I uh, I don't even know what else to say. She's just uh, she's a really cool kid. I call her the Taco Baby. She's, yeah. You know. Yeah. 
She's quite famous now. She's signing more autographs, and people call her cute more than you do me, and that kind of makes me jealous. So <laughs> we're going to have to talk to her. I'm going to probably ground her until she's 30. Uh, well, you know. What do you think? But no, man, yeah, being a father is awesome. I've uh, been working at a place called Liquid Note. Um, that's Great pretty, place. Yeah, pretty cool place. But ever since the pandemic shut everything down, it's been kind of crazy. Um, I don't know what's really going to happen with uh, you know this stuff once we get once it gets lifted up. I yeah. mean, I don't know what to expect over here in like uh, <laughs> convenience store glass in front of the bar. And yeah, stuff. like I'm hearing all types of crazy stuff, but. I don't know, man. It's, it's uh, you know, entertainment's uh, not never going to die, I don't think. And no. I'm just like pro wrestling, I don't think it's ever going to die. But it's definitely going to be uh, changed up a little bit, dude. It's yeah. going to be the same for a while. I hope yeah. everybody knows that. Yeah, for sure. And it's like, uh, you know, and that will lead us on to our, our next topic. Uh, do we still watch wrestling? I mean, honestly, uh, do you? Yeah, I never quit. Okay, see, there you go. You're, what about you? You know, I have not quit tuning into wrestling okay. i will say my biggest um my biggest thing for wrestling news right now is wrestle talk uh, with uh, ollie davis and those dudes out yeah. there and uh, where are they from uh i know i, I can't put them can't put the location to my mind but i know what you're talking about yes. it's good, but it's good good place good good coverage yep uh, they're funny as shit yep. um and like you know, sometimes I just got a lot going on, being a new dad and everything like that, and just kind of trying to get my life together. And, uh, you know, um, I also had a split up with my uh, my baby mama. Yeah. And, you know, you got to have to do a lot of that stuff. And then also when you start uh, seeing and dating uh, new people uh, who come in and out of your life or, uh, you know, anything like that, it's, it's, very, it's very interesting. Yeah. You know, people want to start beating your ass a lot. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh. It's uh, crazy. Yeah, but, uh, I want to say shouts out to my good friend and uh, my partner um, in crime, Storm. She's a good, she's a good chick. Yeah, she really is. Um, Hopefully, we can get her into wrestling. Uh, she already is. Her dad's Ric Flair. <laughs> Straight up, her yeah. dad's Ric Flair. Dude. Oh, jeez, I thought Corey was Ric Flair. Well, he that. There's a couple of Ric Flair wannabes out yeah. there. Yeah, really is. It's crazy to think about. But Corey, uh, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, dude, honestly, uh, life's been crazy, and I just haven't really been tuning into wrestling a lot. I know there's a lot of good wrestling going oh on. Oh, my God. I do know, like, what's going on in the business, because I've always been a really big fan about the business side of things, I think, more so than actually. I mean, honestly, I, I love the business yeah. of wrestling. I just, yeah. It's cool to me. It's like a, it's a mafia to me. You oh, gee. It's, like it's funny you bring that up. It's true, though. You know it is. Because my buddy Todd, shouts out to my buddy Toddy Wrestling, is what they call him, um, he told me about a comic book a while back. And I'm not talking like your 20-page comic book. Right. I'm talking like... Thick one? Like 176 pages. Jesus Christ, it's a novel. It is a novel. Yeah. But it's called The Comic Book History of Pro Wrestling. And when you say ma- when you said Mafia, yeah. I was like, it just brought me back then because I've read through the book already. And pro wrestling used to be like ran by two types of people. Yeah. That- the mafia and Car- the carnies. Yeah, carnies, dude. Yeah. And it's just crazy to well, think to think about how it has evolved. That's why when people are like, uh, "What's your what's your thing that you like?" That's kind of weird, you know. And uh, I don't even necessarily. I would never say professional wrestling is weird. And if you think that, then I'm gonna beat your fucking ass. You understand me? <laughs> Do we do? Do we do a disclaimer before the show that this could be a little bit? Uh, I'll write the be, disclaimer because of me, not because of you. I'll write the disclaimer when I put it out. I'm very left field, guys. I'm really out there, guys. Yeah. I'm out there. I'm um, very right field, but I'm out out there too. <laughs> that's, We're both out there, but in different ways. Yes, we, we connect very well with yeah. it. Oh, kick the microphone again, there. Yeah, guys. I know. Why not? Oh shit! <laughs> but yeah, man, like wrestling is kind of like a mafia, and it's uh, it's really cool. Like it's an underground, you know. From the, the calls in the ring to yeah. the, the shit that people don't even know about that goes behind the scenes. It's yeah. pretty crazy stuff, man. Um, what things do we enjoy about wrestling still? Like, What things do you enjoy, Joe? I personally love just how many promotions have surfaced. They're getting yes. really good um, coverage. Like, I mean, Impact Wrestling still getting good coverage. Major League Wrestling is doing great. Um, New Japan starting to get more of an American audience, which you know they. I love I love New Japan. Like New Japan is just 
You know, but like they, I said, I've never actually seen an episode of New like they still, I mean, I've seen clips and stuff, obviously. They, they still appreciate the sporting competition aspect of it type thing. Like, it's just very competitive, and, like, you don't have a whole lot of squash matches. Like, I think the shortest match I've ever seen is, like, ten minutes. Yeah. And so, I, I do... That's not even a squash match. No, I know. That's, a, that's, that's what I'm saying, thing. though. That's, that's what I'm that, saying, though. Like, the art. It's, like I'm, it's like everyone's on equal footing there. Yes. Um, and so, there's, there's that going on. Um, obviously, NXT, that's probably... My favorite brand to watch. Who's your favorite uh, NXT wrestler? Ooh, that's a tough one. Because I watch every time time. Honestly, since this pandemic started, I just have not been able to engage into any product, whether it be AEW or WWE or NXT, because there's no fans. Well, I mean, they've created... It breaks my, it breaks my heart. Well, man. they've created their own fans now. Well, I know that, but that's how fucking stupid is that? <laughs> Honestly, how stupid is that? I know, but hey... Keep it. Who are these people that create, uh, who are the fans that are coming there? They, there's, I mean, there's the wrestlers. Oh, that's what they said. They, yeah. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. It's like The ones they're not using on TV. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Jesus. But it's fun, though. It's funny. I mean, as long as they're making a spoof about it. I gotta, yeah, I think it's funny. That's got to be cool. Then. Um, I haven't just, I, maybe I need to tune like in. Like NXT really. just started it this past week. Probably. Yeah, I heard that they were doing something. Like um, I heard that. I thought it was funny. I think I heard that from Russell Talk, actually. I think, you know, I mean, I mean, they got to do what they got to do. Yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's crazy, right? I think of, and I got to say this, too. <laughs> not only do we talk about professional wrestling on here, we're, we've got a lot of near and dear friends who are in the independent wrestling business. Oh, so, yeah. So, and and that, a lot of those guys. That's, that's got to hurt, yeah. man, honestly. Just like a stand-up comedian, like, I can't even get on stage and make people laugh, which is, for me, medicine, to kind of deal with my, my problems and express myself. And I can't do that either. So you know, I so. gotta gotta talk about one guy. Um, it's an army army veteran, and pro wrestling was his outlet. Like that was just how he dealt with all the stuff from when he was in the military or whatever. A lot of people have. And it. when he, ever since this whole thing has went down, he's been really struggling. Yeah. Um, you know, I just I feel for him, and like I'm I'm one of those people right now. Like, I'm not going to, my thing is I'm not going to purchase from big corporations if I don't have to. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to support independent, small, local businesses. And, you know, I'll probably do the same thing when pro wrestling on the independent level comes back. Like, I'll probably not buy stuff from WWE or whatever. I'll focus my, you know, efforts on independent wrestling. Yeah. Like, I mean, we have, you know, just. Buy local, man. Yeah, exactly. And even. Even like uh, your food to your pro wrestling tickets. Yeah, exactly. Local, you, know? you know, and um, you know, I mean, we got a finally got a home base wrestling promotion in Kalamazoo now. Yeah, uh, tell me more about that. Who is that? Uh, Josh Raymond is running Independence Pro Wrestling. Shout out to Josh at uh, Y Bar and Bistro. That see, that's cool. Um, I think, and that I think that's really good for Josh too because. That's a decent venue. And yeah, it, and it's a it's a smaller, but actually not too small of a no. venue. It's actually a really nice venue for pro wrestling. How'd that show turn out, by the way? I know it was a winter storm. Uh, I, I have not, believe it or not, I have not been to any of the shows. No? Because it seems like... How many have they had there? I think five or five, I think. Mm. Um, but they, they're they running once a month. But it's really weird. For whatever reason, every time the day of a show happened, something catastrophic would happen in my life, and I couldn't make it to the show. Yeah, that's usually the And that the just was... Looking forward to doing Just that. bothered me. Yeah. But, like, his summer shows at uh, the Water Belay Festival um, in July, usually late July, those outdoor shows are fun. Yeah. Uh, they're hotter than heck to sit through. Yeah. But they, he just, he just puts on great shows and gives people matchups they don't usually see anywhere else. And I think uh, our dear friend Chris Jacobs actually retired, recent retired. Yeah, yep, yep, CJ uh, Anderson. Wrestler, yes. Great um, guy. Yeah, he worked for Josh. Yep. Yes. Well, he Josh, actually trained with yep, Josh. Yep, Josh trained him. And, uh, you know, CJ had a lot going on, and just physical things were kind yep. of catching up with him. It's and, a tough business, man. Um, I just seen, I just saw him last week, and, you know, being in the trucking industry right now, he's... He's struggling, man. Yeah. Like, the truckers are really under a lot of stress. And I'm not just talking about the people that are actually trucking. Like, people are doing the dispatching mm-hmm. and, you know, trying to load the trucks and everything. All those people are just 
dealing with mass amounts of stress right now. Yeah, it's like I said, it's crazy time. It's crazy time for entertainment, professional wrestling, people on a personal level. It's just been a really weird deal. Um, I wish uh, you know the people. Uh, I wish people well, honestly. Yeah. During this time, and it's I guess it's going to end soon. I don't know what to believe yeah. anymore, man. So you had asked me. Who my favorite NXT star was. Yeah. And then we got off in a completely... Oh, well, this can always be edited. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. We always get off on directions whenever we... So let me ask the question again. So, we can, <laughs> so I know when to, these talking points. Um, so who's yes. your favorite NXT wrestler? My favorite NXT wrestler right now would have to be Keith Lee. I'm going to go ahead and second that one. I love Let's Keith see. Lee. I was going to say... Uh, something about that guy. Yeah. Like, not only that he's fucking huge and he does awesome moves for a yeah. big dude. I mean, he that's that alone is cool as shit. But yeah. his whole um, gimmick is just asking his glory. Yeah, it's, just, it's different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying like it's a yep. good, it's a cool way of bragging. It's like a yep. it's like a new rock almost. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And he's a uh, that's cool man. He's a good dude. I was gonna say he's one of my favorites too. But um, who's your favorite in AEW now? Lance Archer. Yes. Okay. Um, I have watched. When TNA was starting to kind of gain a lot of traction, uh, Lance, you know, he was Lance Hoyt, mm-hmm. and he team. I remember him teaming with Kid Cash. Mm-hmm. And I just, I, for some reason, I just love that combination. For whatever reason, it just was a cool combination, kind of like a Sean Diesel mm-hmm. combination. And Lance, like, like I always thought Lance could do more when he was in TNA, mm-hmm. but then when he got to New Japan and became Murder Hawk and just running through everybody, and it's got the red hair hawk thing going, mm-hmm. just destroying people, like, oh, my God. I was like, this guy is going to be so awesome now. And I remember about a year ago, um, this I think it was the first season of Straight Up Steve Austin. On the I never event. got to catch it. Great show. That great show. Steve Austin's great. Yep. Yeah. Well, there was an episode and where... I said so. There was an episode where... Um, Lance appeared on Steve Austin's show to help him out with something. And I remember looking back at that moment, and, and, I, and I looked at my other half, I was like, he's a made man. Yeah. Like, he was just on, he was just featured with Steve Austin. So people are going to know who he is now. Yeah. And sure enough, a few months later, he won the uh, IWGP United States title, had good matches with John Moxley and Juice mm-hmm. Robinson, and then now he's an AEW running rough shot over everybody. Yeah. I say my favorite AEW guy is going to be Orange Cassidy, bro. <coughs> and why are you laughing? Because you would be an Orange Cassidy fan. His his gimmick is so... I mean, you know I'm a gimmick dude. I know. You know, I love, I love athletics, and I, I got to appreciate all the pro wrestlers out there, honestly, but... If as far as gimmick goes, dude, I fucking love that guy. It's it's so funny how he just doesn't try, and that's the cool thing about it. It's like, but he actually is a good pro wrestler. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, he's a great athlete. That's the thing. But his gimmick is just, you know, uh, being a yeah. lazy piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, I love it though, dude. And like, uh, I guess that, that could kind of lead us into like, what things do you think uh, pro wrestling could even improve on right now with all the things that are going on? Well, I've said this for a while now. WWE has, like, the most depth on their roster that they've ever had, in my opinion, at least since, like, 2002. Like, 2002, they have, like, enormous depth, but they used that depth correctly. Like, there was so many guys getting over in 2002, 2003. It just wasn't, like, you know, two or four guys getting over and the rest of her shit. Mm Mm-hmm. Right now, it's like we have two or four guys on each show getting over, and the rest are shit. Right. Like, um, you asked me about my favorites in the next team AEW. Mm-hmm. My favorite pro wrestler, period, right now, has been Cesaro. Yeah. Well, and, it's been, and it's been Cesaro for since, a long time. Since we were doing the podcast back then. Yeah. And the fact that he is basically not even mid-card at this point, and losing every, like... He is now, okay, so he won his singles match at WrestleMania against Drew Gulak. Yep. The last time he won a singles match prior to that was August of 2019 in NXT UK. Okay. So that's an eight-month stretch of not 
winning a singles match. There's something wrong there. Right. Like, that dude is, like, they don't call him the Swiss Superman for nothing. Right. And he is very talented. He does physical feats of strength that not a lot of other guys can do. And the fact that he hasn't held the world title, universal title, or intercontinental title not only that, is a shame. That dude has been, like, in a lot of different good companies, too, and he's been putting work in for... A long time. ...fucking almost 20 years. Yeah, like, Ring of Honor, like, Jim Cornette, you know, I, and I know a lot of people hate what Jim Cornette has to say. I don't know why people hate Jim Cornette. Because so he's that. very old school. Well, so what? I'm very old school. So, so am I, dude. That was the best fucking era in pro wrestling. Yeah, and so he come out and flat out said a long time, like, probably two years ago, that Claudio Castanoli, which is his real name, and Chris Hero, Kings of Wrestling, he yeah, he said that was his favorite tag team when he was running Ring of Honor. It's great. I mean, it, honestly, like uh, all the wrestlers from back then um, are huge now. Yeah, you know, pretty much. I mean, the ones. That, I mean, even the the uh, uh, what's his name, the announcer dude that uh, used to be a pro professional wrestler, the dude that used to be on Ring of Honor. What's his name? He's uh, Nigel. Yeah, McGinnis. Nigel. Yeah, NXT UK. Yeah, he's great, dude. He's fucking great. I mean, like uh, all of them are pretty big dudes, but they're not. They're not getting some of the pushes they deserve in uh, yeah. WWE. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that's what pisses me off about the business more. So, and it's I'm directly going at WWE on this one because I've been <coughs> a fan since I was a kid and. The product just sucks to me right now, honestly. NXT is cool, but everything else, I just, yeah. I mean, look, look at Shinsuke. Look, I can't give look, look at Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah, I think for that dude say, should be world champion. Oh uh, yeah, why isn't he? Because Somebody tell me this. Uh, I know. So like, <laughs> you know, Fucking great athlete. Or or you know, if they're if they're not gonna, you know, and I hate to say this, if they're not gonna put guys like Nakamura and Cesaro as single stars. Nakamura and Cesaro should have had the tag belts already. Yes. Like, but they, but, but, like, on SmackDown, it's one or two teams. The New Day or the Usos. Yeah, I mean. Nobody else is getting any. And that's kind of getting old. Yeah. Um, that's why when the Revival jumped to AEW, I thought that was a good move. Mm-hmm. Uh, you think Rusev's going there? Oh. <laughs> to me, okay, so I like the Revival. I like John Moxley. Mm-hmm. I like Brody Lee. Mm-hmm. Thought Brody Lee was a huge thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like Rusev will have the most impact if he jumps because Rusev Day. I the Rusev Day thing was more over than Dean Ambrose, more over than the Revival, yeah. more over than Luke Harper, yep. and people genuinely love Rusev. They do. What do you think, like, his character would be if he did sign? Well, I know he couldn't be Rusev, well, because yeah, that's a trademark. Know. Oh, fuck that. Um, <laughs> I think it'd be the same thing. Yeah. Just tuned up a little differently. Yeah. You know, and I I was bummed when he was released. Like, look, But you knew what was coming. But here's the thing, though. You knew, like, either he was going to do it or... Rusev, there's another one that should have been world champion. Yeah. Rusev should have been world champion, and then when him and Aiden English were together doing the Rusev intro... Him and Aiden should have been tag champs for like a year. Yeah. But again, it, 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 it's number one, Vince McMahon doesn't care about tag teams. No, he doesn't. That, that's, nice. that's the big problem. Number two, the ones that he cares about are the same ones that are getting titles all the time. Yeah. The Usos, New Day, not even sure who the Raw tag champs are. Oh, Street Profits, which that's okay because they're fairly new. Mm-hmm. And the War War Raiders. You know, I... I like the Street Profits. Yeah, so... At least, at least on Raw, like newer teams are kind of. Is that because of Paul Heyman, or is he? Oh, uh, I think it's that? very much to do with Paul Heyman. Yeah, good. Um, whereas on SmackDown, I'm like, who's on SmackDown right now? Like tag wise? No, who's just writing it? Who's the main writer for uh, SmackDown? Bruce Pritchard. That's what I figured. But um, oh, why the fuck they even called Eric Bischoff back? <laughs> that was a joke. But the Forgotten Sons, I hope get the titles at some point. See, yeah, I haven't, I haven't watched an episode of SmackDown and Raw. So like, Forgotten cool. Sons are really cool. That's why people are saying that. And now. so, that's cool though. if they don't get the tag titles, then I know there's something really wrong. Yeah. Well, you know, we're going to kind of take this off of professional wrestling with this uh, reading podcast. We're just going to ask, you know, 
kind of catch up. Like, what have you actually been doing during to entertain yourself during all this besides wrestling? Just wrestling, watching wrestling. Um. Well, uh, from an entertainment standpoint, um, you know, me and the other half decided that we were going to splurge on one thing during this whole time. And me and me and the other half are really big into Chicago PD, the show. Mm-hmm. Um, so we bought all the seasons of Chicago PD mm-hmm. and are watching them in order. Um, and I just, I don't know why, what it is, but something about the Hank Voigt character, just I love that character. Yeah. Um, it kind of reminds me. Do you remember the show Las Vegas? Yes, I do. Like, Hank Voigt's character kind of, Reminds me of Ed Deline's character a little bit. Just that cutthroat will do anything to get justice done and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I always loved Ed Deline's character in Las Vegas. And so um, Chicago PD has been like my go-to show. Um, just, uh, I don't, just the characters. Ch- Chicago PD? Yeah, PD, yep. Uh, my Chica- buddy Russ Williamson was on Chicago Fire. Okay, well... Cole Cabana was on fire and PD at one Makes point. Makes sense. I think actually Russ was on PD too. I think okay. a lot of people from Chicago. Are yeah, they are, they get plugged in. Yeah, they're, they're in the entertainment business. Yep, and so I just love that show. Um, let's see other TV shows. Um, binge watched all all of Cobra Kai seasons one and two again uh, because I'm a big Karate Kid. Mark love Karate Kid. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, actually, one of my uh, Dudes I used to work with back in the day of stand-up comedy was in one of those episodes. Okay. Uh, I think the first season, his name's Brett Ernst. He played, I think, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't seen a lot of the episodes. Yeah. They're cool shows. Yeah. Um, so I've been watching those shows. Um, been playing some cornhole here and there. Cornhole. Love my cornhole. Um, you might want to call my big cousin Jason. Just uh, smack <laughs> some people around in cornhole. Yeah, no, I... Uh, very fortunate to own a, own a set of boards myself and go. pull them out when it's nice weather out. And uh, I've gotten together with a friend of mine and um, in recent weeks to throw because, honestly, throwing alone kind of gets boring after a while. Um, but I figure, you know, if you can do, if you can throw with somebody in a safe and respectful manner mm-hmm. and, you know, not, not like get a crowd of people, um, I, you know, I've been, I've been having fun doing that just throwing one-on-one against a friend of mine and Heck yeah. kills me every time. Well, I tell you what, as far as I, what I've been doing during this pandemic, um, uh, pretty much everything but playing in traffic, guys. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. Uh, <laughs> no, it's been a crazy ride, honestly. Um, but I've been trying to stay busy by just being creative still, man. Um, I've been making music again, kind of just, you know, little fun fact about me, I used to do rap music back in my early 20s, and actually was pretty good at it, and uh, now I don't really take myself too serious like I used to back then, and I kind of just got like a new comedy type thing I'm trying to do, um, kind of a jack of all trades yeah. over here, if you want to say that, so just kind of been staying busy with that, and uh, you know, um, seeing a new person in my life, and uh, she's very beautiful, very awesome person, her name's Stormy. Shouts out to her. And it's not Stormy Daniels. You say that to me ever fucking again, I'll kill you. <laughs> that. We're tired of hearing it. Uh, so, yes, that's her real name. She does not need to show you her ID either. So <laughs> thank you for that. Um, uh, but, yeah, you know, just just been kind of, you know, living life and stuff. Can't lie. There's been a lot of fucking drama going around ever since this shit's dropped. So, yeah. you know, but uh, we, we live and learn, and uh, we learn to be better people. And yeah. that's, uh, that's what I've been doing. I also, yeah. just a couple of days ago... Uh, decided to quit drinking alcohol uh, because that was not a good deal for me. Yeah. And, uh, I have a lot of support from the right people who have been in my shoes and had a similar lifestyle that I've lived for a long time. So, yeah. And that's cool. Support's good. And that's what's so uh, good to see you here, too, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, finally we get to, you know, hang out again and yeah. get to eat some Mexican food. That was some good stuff. You know, good-ass trees and eggs. You know how I get down, bro. So, yeah. I mean, um, let's see, what, what else do we have down here? We said, uh, what have we learned about ourselves in the last six years? What, what have you learned about yourself in the last six years, dude? Well, you know, I think we, we talked about this before we started recording. Six years ago when I had my uh, third open heart surgery, like, I felt really alone. Like, I knew I wasn't alone um, because, I mean, I know there's people that love me and care about me and 
there was people that reached out to me through text and messaging, but like I I think you know I felt so alone because there wasn't anybody that could really relate to what I was going through, and so for me, the one big takeaway from that whole thing was okay, if I ever find a friend of mine or I ever see a friend of mine that feels alone as I did during that time, I'm going to do my best to make sure they don't feel that way. Right. And I've just, I've really, you know, kind of humbled myself because I was always kind of full of myself too, but in a different way. Mm -hmm. Um, I think going to a new church and, you know, meeting new people and having a family through that church has really made a huge positive impact and difference in my life, so... Yeah, and I, and I think um, I'm kind of trying to get on, on a different path myself. I'm trying to explore more of my um, mental health issues. So yeah. it's, not, it's, not, no, it's no goddamn secret that I'm kind of a crazy guy. <laughs> um, and then the family members around me are also crazy people, but uh, they're good people. We, yeah. uh, we live hard and we love hard pretty much. And yeah. um, we got to learn some things about ourselves here along the way. It's, you know, it's a new age. It's a new time new times and people got to kind of, you know, figure some things out and, and try to learn how to be better people. And that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm just trying to get on my spiritual, my spiritual trip for myself and my daughter and the people I love. And, um, you know, I still smoke a lot of pot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I mean, that's, that's just going to have to always be a part of the, the gimmick. So, yeah. uh, yeah, it's just what I am, man. And I like tacos. I yeah. like tacos and marijuana. Ta- tacos are good. <laughs> um, well, yeah, even though I didn't put it on the outline, I guess one question I was just thinking about just talking was like, what are you looking forward to once all this is over? Man, I'm just, honestly, I can't wait to go back out to dinner at some of my favorite places again. I yeah. can't wait to go to music shows and, uh, you know, concerts and just fun things like wrestling. And, yeah. You know, just do it. That's that's what I'm a people person, man. I love going out and yeah. I love seeing things and trying new places to eat and uh, seeing new places to, you know, just hang out at. And yeah. uh, I'm a big big person with that and yeah that's just been kind of taken away from all of us you know i like yeah. going out and getting a slice yeah. of pizza and hanging out somewhere and i like getting my hair cut at my barber shop yeah. my buddy lee and shit i miss that dude and you know we're all locked down like we're in fucking jail and whatnot <laughs> so and it's just uh you know it's, it's sad but hopefully it's going to end soon and i think yeah. but when it does end like i think people really do need to take precautions that this is pretty serious shit. yeah oh yeah and if it's not if it's a goddamn you know Thing for the election or whatever yeah. people want to say the hell it is. I Somebody know. conspiracy theories. That's retarded either way. Just f- fucking wash your hands. Put it there. Just put wash your hands. Be smart. Be smart. Wash your hands. How about that? Yeah. You know, I think that's, that's what they've been preaching since day one. Yeah. Be smart. Wash your hands. That's true. And people are fucking stupid and don't wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> They're dirt balls. Well, <laughs> I think for me, I think the one thing I'm looking forward to the most. Um, it's going back to church in person. Yeah. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong. Like, um, my church is doing phenomenal things as best as they can with technology. And I heard a lot of pe- people are doing that right now. Yeah, like, um, it's really awesome. And, you know, a little side story. Like, because this has affected people so many different ways. Um, but for me, I think the low point that I hit was Easter weekend. Mm-hmm. Like, not being in church on Easter Sunday, for whatever reason, just drove me up the wall, and just something in me snapped, and I just got really angry, because, like, I mean, of all the days not to be in church, like, Christmas, Christmas is Christmas, I mean... They do the same thing. That, that, that's the thing, but for whatever reason, Easter Sunday is, like, to me, the best day of the year in terms of going to church. I yeah. mean, every Sunday's great. Don't get me wrong. It's like I said, I love my church. But just for whatever reason, Easter Sunday has that vibe to it. You know, and I, that's what I'm saying. Like, those are the things I miss doing, too. Like, uh, I'd go to, uh, my family would invite me to go to uh, TVC every once yeah. in a while. Uh, and that's where they've been going since back in the day. Shouts out to Pastor Jeff. Yeah, he's One pretty cool, dude. One dudes I know. Actually. He's awesome. I mean, if, it, if it's anybody that's got my attention, it's that guy. Yeah. And, yep. I don't, and I don't know why. I think he looks like Steve Martin. <laughs> I don't know what it is. But um, I, I, th- I think the other thing for me, like you said, like movies and yeah. wrestling shows, like I'm really bummed 
You guys, I'm I more, miss sitting in the movie yeah. and a shitty hot dog. Yeah. You know, and a pretzel. Yeah, I'm a more like Memorial Day weekend. You know, Fast Fast Furious 9 was supposed to come out. Yeah. And that just really bothered me last weekend. That's one of my favorite movie franchises. And now I'm having to wait until next April to watch it. This is bullshit. Yeah. Top Gun's another one that got pushed That's out. That's right, yeah. Uh, that was supposed to be in June or July. and Well, there's a lot of stuff that people can't do in the exactly. entertainment industry because it's not essential. But, like, that even kind of, you know, brings me to one of my points about what, what you know, what's the biggest story in sports entertainment. Like, one of the biggest stories in entertainment is the war between AMC Theaters and Universal Studios right now. Yeah, what's going on with that? So, you heard, you heard about the movie Trolls World Tour, right? Yeah, the, the weird little fucking Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> but I used to love Trolls back Yeah, so, up. like, a few weeks after the pandemic started, um, was, supposed to, was supposed to be when Trolls World Tour was released in theaters. Yes. Um, but instead of pushing it out a year like all these other people have, they decided, okay, why not just put it on pay-per-view on demand through the cable providers and let people buy it? To watch it. Yeah. And so they did that. Like, it was on Dish. It was on Charter. It was on um, DirecTV, whatever whatever the cable provider was. Well, AMC Theaters got a bug up their butt about it because they felt it was taking away business from the movie theaters. Well, you know, kind of hard to take business away when you're not operating the business, you know, For sure. regardless. And so they came out. They came out with a statement a few days later, said that they will not air any more Universal Studios videos, movies. Um, and I don't know if that ever got settled, but that was the last I heard on it. And I'm like, man, like for a movie theater franchise that's threatening to have to file bankruptcy, severing ties with Universal Studios. That's stupid. Not a smart idea. Yeah. People got to be like... That like, might be the nail in the coffin. Like, people, you know, I mean, kids... Kids are really affected by this thing. Oh, yeah, for sure. And so, like, I thought it was Can cool. you imagine not graduating high school? Yeah. Like, or at least not having the ceremony. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, people are getting screwed over. Right? And so, like, I applaud Universal Studios for releasing that for kids having... So kids had something to hold on to and get excited about yeah. and stuff like that. I wish they'd give us, adult, us adults something and release Fast and the Furious 9 the same way. I wish they released a new fucking Scarface movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like to see. Yeah, so, yeah, cool. yeah. I heard they were supposed to be making one, but who knows what the hell yeah. that's even about. Yeah, but, yeah man. Um, let's see, what we got here? Anything else? Closing thoughts? Got closing thoughts. Okay, check this out. Usually closing thoughts in the show, we like to give shots out to local businesses, and we're going to take a little bit of time to do that. Uh, Joe, who are the people that you want to shout out to today on our reunion podcast here? Definitely want to shout out Cornhole America up in Rocker, Michigan. Tell people about that story a little bit. Uh, okay, That's so cool, actually. Um, so I have a buddy, his name is Zach, and <laughs> Zach is a uh, sports anchor for Fox 17. And it's been hard on the sports anchors because... There's really not have been a whole lot of sports, mm-hmm. and so he's kind of have he's kind of had that to adjust. Too, man. He's kind of had, had to adjust. He's kind of had to adjust, you know, covering different things. And I'm like, man, a lot of these reporters, all they're doing is having to report on negative stuff. That's a lot of the world. Man. And, and so, shit. I'm like, I want to help this guy out and like find positive things to report on. Mm-hmm. And you know, about a week or so ago, I went up. And visited my buddy Jason up in Rockford, um, who runs Cornhole uh, America, and he's Cornhole business is booming. Yeah, dude. Um, like well, they got the goddamn uh, what is it, the Cornhole World Series or whatever the hell um, that shit is? What the fuck? Amer- is it? American it's Cornhole, like league, right? American Cornhole League. That shit is ACL. cool, and they got it on ESPN. Yes, and it's on again. It's on every Saturday now. But are they? Now, how are they? Is that live or is it? It's live. So, how do they do that with people around? Still, yeah, or? no crowds. Okay. Um, they don't really need them. No, not not. But I it's mean, fun. It's, it's fun. The atmosphere yeah, is like fun. Said, just like with anything. With um, around, it's fun. But you know, NASCAR's been back for a few weeks. I heard that. And too. that has been fun to watch. Um, the way they have adjusted NASCAR, it's actually been the funnest to watch. It's been in a long time. No shit. Um, is there not? They they basically eliminated <laughs> qualifying and practicing. 
and you basically got to figure out your car as you go. Oh, that's nice. And then I'm like, I kind of hope they stick with that permanently. Yeah, no shit. He's like, that's cool. awesome. Yeah. Um, but anyways, Cornhole America uh, told, told my buddy Zach about how business is booming for him. And Zach decided to go up there and interview Jason, the owner. And, awesome. Um, I just, I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, think of positive news and positive stories that people can, you know, get exposure with. Well, that's that's good about you, man, honestly. And there needs to be more people out in the world like you because uh, there's a lot of negative going on right now, truth be told. Um, sometimes, even in my life, so... But uh, that's why we kind of met up today, and, you know, I'm glad that we got to see each other. And, uh, you know, to be honest with you, um, a couple of people I want to shout out as well, too. Um, Liquid Note, uh, the place I work. I'm not sure what it's going to be like when, when everything's lifted up and whatnot, but it's a great place. You ever want to check it out? we got some great beer, good food, yep. good staff. Um, really cool spot. I do my comedy out there. I did a Taco Mania deal. Yeah. Um, Taco Mania champion, Byron fucking Marsh. Bam. Bam. Oh, Hip bam. No. It's funny when a pro wrestler actually wins the goddamn belt. That's what was I love it. the irony of it. But um, he's got some competition out there. We, we were going to have Taco Mania too, but then this, this shit came up. And uh, yeah. we're actually going to have it on WrestleMania weekend. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and so the governor said uh, no to... Anything like that, you yeah. know, we were kind of forced uh, to shut it down, but the, the, it was a lot of fun. There's two other places that come to mind when I'm thinking about shouting out. A um, friend of mine who owned, got two friends of mine that own, uh, it's called Blue Frost IT. Mm -hmm. They uh, help uh, smaller companies with their IT and network networking and their digital data. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're listening to this and you got a small business and you're looking for you know, somebody who's affordable and fair when all this is over and you need to save a little bit of money, um, check them out because they, yeah. I, at least I know the owners and they are very honest people and do business with integrity. Yep. And the last place other than Hollywood's World of Sports, so I'm always going to shout out my own stuff. Yeah. Um, the story about Yesterdog, man, gets people going every time. Oh, yeah. So... You know, most people that know me know that I love Yesterdog. I have loved that place since I've heard of it. Um, which, great place. which took me a long time to hear of. What the? What, why? Because, like, I always grew up, you know, in Wayland. In Wayland. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> I didn't know of, I didn't know of Yesterdog until, like, early, early. Until yesterday. Well, no. Until early, mid 2000s. Yeah, well, like, been, I think how long has it been around for? Like, 40, 50 years, I think. Okay, well then I'm I'm lost too. I'm yeah, sure. I thought it was only around. Oh well, no, no, it's been around a long time. Shit, son. Um, <laughs> that's a good deal. Like it's been around a long time. So, yeah. so okay, so a few days after the the shutdown started, restaurants were still open. Yeah, obviously for sure. Some of them closed immediately. I was really depressed one day, and I was gonna go to Yester Dog just to get some cheddars because I love the cheddar dogs. Mm -hmm. And I'm hungry for a hot dog. Right? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was halfway to the the restaurant, mm -hmm. and notification came on my phone said that they were shutting down. Oh damn! I was pissed. I was angry beyond like reproach. Like you couldn't even talk to me. Like Holly, like Holly was just. I called her. I was like, you ain't gonna believe this. A lot of words I shouldn't be saying. Hey, <laughs> I can say them. You say it for me, yeah. I'll, um, I was mad. Dude. I was irate. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, okay, well, this sucks. I guess no yesterday for me. Man. And, I'm, and I'm, friend, I'm friends with one of the managers there. His name is Jesse. Jess. Um, he's a really cool guy. Awesome. Awesome human being. I told him, I was like, Jess, when you guys are allowed to open again, you better tell me. Yeah. Right, so he's, he, he's gonna be holding well, no, point, so, God damn it. no. So <laughs> he he emailed me uh, two days before they were gonna open. I was like, hey, we're opening this day, same time as we always do. Speaking of hot dogs and shot shout outs, dude, I gotta say, uh, Gun Lake's got this new little corn dog spot. Uh, yeah, right across the street from the lake. Yeah, I've heard that. And. Uh, <laughs> That's Everyone's funny. raving about them. Well, it, they're actually goddamn good. I yeah. can't remember what the place is called, but it's a look up corn dog spot in Gun Lake on Google. I'm sure you'll find it, and it's uh, pretty awesome. They're like two fifty. Yeah, they're totally worth it. They're yep. really good. And um, I went out there 
And uh, what's funny, what attracted me and everything is it was, I think, last week or two weeks ago, um, I took uh, Stormy and her kids out there, and uh, there were a whole bunch of people down there, but there was nobody wearing masks. <laughs> okay, so, a, so <laughs> I, you're standing out. Gun Lake, though. But you're standing outside, right? Orangeville. Yeah, we were standing outside. So, but, but see, that I... I'm not even getting into that whole subject because I don't want to. It's not even worth it. It's not, don't even, don't. Again, wash no. your hands, be be smart. Yeah. So anyways, so he t- he he tells me just just tells me when Yester Dog's open and again and he's he's a really cool dude. And I think he knew I was coming. Like he just knew. And so He said this motherfucker's coming here. Yeah. And so I told myself We better be open. I told myself <laughs> When it shut down oh, shit. for a month, when the day shut down, yeah. I uh, was like, I'm going to be the first person back when they're open. And I don't care what anybody says. I will cut in line. I'll shove people in the street if I have to. I don't care. I'm going to be the first person back. And they open at 10.30. <laughs> they open at 10.30. I showed up at 10.15. And you were there. Just was waiting for me. Like, I knew you were coming. Four cheddars out the delta. How much that run you? Um, four cheddars. Uh, I think like, I don't know, like twelve bucks. I think that's worth it, dude. If they if they stack those hot dogs, they do. What and kind of hot dogs they use? Oh, uh, I, I, you know what? I've never asked that. Do, I, do they cook them in like steam them like water, or do they cook them on a grill, or what do they do with that? I, I feel like flat top. I think flat top possibly. Yeah, that's the way to go. But I was the first person back. There you go. And I made sure to make note of it. <laughs> and uh, did they did they give you like a free prize for that or anything? No, like no, but <laughs> did no, dude. They but they gave but they gave you a lot of respect and they, they do give me a lot of respect and go. I love that place. Well, I tell you what, my final shout out and plug of the night uh, is going to have to be uh, soon. I think actually this coming Monday. Uh, I don't know when we're going to drop this, but uh, it'll be here soon. Um, I'm going to be shooting a music video called uh, "To Live and Die in Orangeville." Huh. Um, and it's uh, loosely based on To Live and Die in L.A., uh, written by Tupac Shakur, kind of paying homage to a, a good uh, old-school rapper, a good artist of, of my time, and uh, kind of just show, showcasing my comedy um, yeah. through through rap music because I love me some music, comedy, and tacos, son. That's what I do. And then um, once all this pandemic stuff lifts, um, I hope to get my card up and running and, uh, you know, uh, I've got some new partners involved who want to, like, uh, help me out with this stuff, so... We're going to make it happen, dude. So yeah. I'll be on the lookout for the Taco Father. Taco, taco Father. We just had some really good tacos. Yes, today. we did. I'm going to keep saying that to everybody. Yep, good like tacos. It. And as always, Hollywood's World of Sports. Yep, Hollywood's World of Sports. Can't Ooh. forget about that place. Where controversy doesn't come without criticism. What are you writing about besides professional wrestling? Though? Well, you know, I... Uh, because there's nothing going on. I was covering... I, I've been covering NASCAR. Okay. And I've always covered NASCAR. But I continued with it when they did iRacing. Because gotcha. the yeah. iRacing stuff was fun. Yeah. Like, I thought that was more entertaining than the actual racing. <laughs> a couple of people lost their jobs because of the iRacing. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. They did because of some language. Oh, well, sure. Um, so I've covered that. Thank God this isn't paid for. No. I'd be, I'd be long gone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'd be long gone just on association. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're not going to mess with this asshole. So going to fire you, too. Um, been covering Cornhole. And I'm starting to develop a really nice um, relationship with the Cornhole community. Yeah. Um, covering wrestling, obviously. Um, for a while there, I was just I was just coming up with like different creative topics, like good. top five lists, and yeah, good. Um, I try to keep Hollywood's World of Sports a safe space, like no politics. No COVID BS. Unfortunately, with uh, you know the way the internet works and the world works, that's kind of impossible to do. Oh no, not yeah. not not for me because here's the thing: if the only time politics are allowed to be brought up on the page or on any of my content is if it directly affects sports, it's yeah. the only time. Yeah. Um, I don't want to hear about who you're voting for, who's to blame for this, yeah, or who's to blame that for that. Shut down real quick. I do shut it down real yeah. quick. Um, you are good for that, though. I want to hear about who your favorite athletes are, yeah. who your favorite teams are, sports, um, whatever. Sometimes I'll throw in a couple of, like, you know, sometimes I'll talk, like, movies and TV shows, mm-hmm. try to, like, 
give sports a break for a minute. Yep. And I've seen a lot of that actually. You've been you've been doing pretty well. I mean, I know it's got to be tough. Out it is tough. I mean, it's tough out there for a comedian. Too. It is tough. And so um, there was one day I was like, on my personal page, I was like, hey, what topics do you want? Like, what topics do you want me to talk about? And there's people that gave me a lot of good ideas, mm-hmm. and I ran with them, mm-hmm. and they were successful. Good. Um, like, I know one that got really successful was Forgotten Tag Teams. Um, and that was just a funny, just a funny topic of talking about. And the quiet criteria was they had the team for two years or less. Oh, God. And I tell you, some of the tag teams I had completely forgot about. I'm sure. That and was. it was just, it was just, it was actually one of the most successful topics I've had since this whole thing started. No kidding. That's so, funny. Yeah. Any way you can engage with people during these times, it's a good thing, man. Yeah. We've got to be there for one another. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in to this uh, reunion version of Smart Asses. Who knows, man? If we got time sometime, we could maybe do, uh, you know, some, some new stuff. Yeah, exactly. And, um, um, you know, I told somebody the other day, because we have a shout out to KB um, up in the UP. Mm-hmm. She was really excited to hear yes. that we were getting together. And she's been doing a lot. She's been sewing masks like. Hey, Nobody business. Yeah, Kelly, why don't you fucking sew me a goddamn taco mask and send it my way? Uh, you know what? Uh, you know I'll wear well, that motherfucker. When she, hear, when she hears this when it drops, I guarantee you're going to get one. She knows I'll wear that. Yeah. That's what I got. Anything um, taco related or, you know, I'll just, just yeah. send it my way and I'll, you yep. know, I'll sport it around. Um, <laughs> They'll know who I am. And, they see uh, me coming. And I flat out told her, I was like, hey, if this thing goes well and the people buy and get into it, who knows? We might try to shoot for more down the road. Yeah, dude. Exactly. That's a good thing. Well, I appreciate everybody tuning in for us uh, here at Smart Asses. My name is Jordan Francisco Montez. And I am Hollywood Joe. And we appreciate you listening. Guys, take care. Peace.